Hello everyone, Beneficial here and today we're going to be talking about the War of the Walkers overhaul mod for 7 Days to Die, which was created by Dwalord. You start out just like every other game, except you will immediately notice that you have a different UI as well as a 15 slot toolbar and a much bigger backpack. This mod uses modlets from various other developers such as Cerulean, Ragzi, and Kane just to name a few. The starter quest line has been shortened so you can jump right into the action. All you have to do is craft a bedroll and you are off to see the trader. Also, to assist you with getting right into the game, you have this nifty War of the Walkers starter pack which sets you up with 100 wood, stone, fiber, as well as 3 first aid bandages, 3 waters, and 3 cans of ravioli. This way you can craft your bedroll and get going without having to punch a bunch of grass. You also can craft your essential tools and weapons right out of the gate. This mod has enough quests to keep you busy for a good while, but the most important ones are your class quests. Unlike in other mods where you need to craft a class book in order to start working on a class questline, War of the Walkers lets you work on whichever ones you want right away. You also get progression quests, and all of these quests reward you with a good amount of coin and a good amount of XP. In War of the Walkers, you get several additional categories to spend your skill points. You have your crafting skills, which improve the quality of the item you craft as well as add bonuses to the usage of those items. Items such as weapons, ammo, armor, and tools. War of the Walkers also has the action skill leveling system where you get better at various actions just by constantly performing them. That includes everything from weapon and tool usage to swimming and stealth. Next, you have the tools category where you can spend skill points in order to unlock the ability to craft certain workstations and tools. You can also find the schematics for most, if not all of these, when you're looting. So before you spend any skill points, just double check to make sure you haven't already read the schematic. There are also certain skills that are contingent upon other skills being unlocked. For example, you can't unlock the recipe for crafting the ammo forge without first putting a point into the skill for ammo crafting. And every skill is also locked behind a level requirement. Weapons are the next category in which you can spend skill points. This allows you to unlock the ability to craft certain weapons. Now, to be honest with you, I don't think I ever spent any points on these since the mod is very generous with loot. I had no trouble finding weapons and ammo. The next category is buildables and is very important early on for anyone who is looking to jump into base building right away. All your buildables, traps, throwables are located in this category. The block upgrade progression for War of the Walkers is wood, reinforced wood, using wooden nails, cobblestone, regular concrete, Portland concrete, steel, and finally, tungsten. Depending on your playstyle and base, you can probably get your main fighting position upgraded to cobblestone, if not concrete, before your first horde. You also get some of your basic storage options, electronics, vehicles, and basic armor types unlocked through this section as well. You have all of your regular vehicles, as well as the addition of some watercrafts like the windsurfer, the raft, the dinghy, and the flatboat. There are a couple more vehicles in this mod you can craft that are not in the skill list, but we will get to those later. The reusable category includes ammo types, repair kits, food, drink, medicine, and farming. I personally only put a couple points in this category and those points were for repair kits, food, drink, and medicine. I believe only about one point in each. I played solo and had no problems with food, so I didn't do any farming in my playthrough. The benefits category has got most of the skills that you are used to, such as Skull Crusher, Parkour, and Sexy Tyrannosaurus. But the difference is, they are only locked behind a level requirement. 
You don't need to spend points in any other main skill in order to add extra points to any of your favorites. You also get additional high level benefits after you reach level 125 and have maxed out the prerequisite skills, such as Motherload 2.0. The final category has skills for each class. Now, these are also contingent upon level requirements as well as your progression through the class quests. Once you have completed the class quests, all that's stopping you from unlocking certain skills is your level. Along with the traders we all know and love, you now get two new traders, Jay and Bill. Jay offers skills and schematics, and Bill has ammo that you can buy. There are also several new trader buildings for each trader. One thing that I found to be a little annoying was that at each tier, all three traders had the same locations and jobs for you. Too many times that I picked the same location from multiple traders and had to drop the duplicate job while heading back to turn in the one and grab a new job. One of my favorite things about War of the Walkers are the followers that you can hire. There are different followers, which you can find in different biomes, and you can have them stand guard, follow you, patrol, and you can put loot in their inventory if you need the extra space. Here are some of the NPCs you might come across. The fox is cool in that you can order it to look for loot in a certain area and it will eventually come back with whatever it found. The NPCs have different ranged and melee weapons that they might be carrying. I personally hired several of them, and hiring one early on in the game makes surviving that much easier. They also act as great guards when you're collecting resources and mining. War of the Walkers also has a plethora of new and different zombies that you will face. Finally, you have the badass demolition zombie who you will need to use armor piercing ammo on or else you might be stuck shooting at its crotch for hours as he skull fucks you or you can just trigger his detonator. There are a variety of new crafting stations in this mod. You can now craft a microwave, a coffee maker, your own personal oven, and all of the new stations require new and unique tools to give them a boost. Here are the rest of the new stations you will get to craft and use in War of the Walkers. The recycler station will either scrap items into parts or convert items into brass or scrap tungsten which you need to create forged tungsten. The brewery station is pretty self-explanatory. You make alcoholic beverages here. The gunsmithing station lets you craft all vanilla guns and mods. The fabrication workstation lets you craft decorative type blocks as well as different storage units. It also lets you craft the big angel and gargoyle statues and the big stone fountain. The ammo workstation is just that. It lets you craft ammo. The chem station and the workbench use batteries to speed up their production, but you still need a fuel source for the chem station. The armor smithing workstation is for crafting advanced armor such as Kevlar, tungsten, and silver. 
The mechanic workstation is for crafting advanced versions of the standard vehicles using either eco or HD parts. The builder's workstation is for crafting rebar, iron frames, and tungsten frames. The blueprint station is for crafting schematic bundles, which you can open for a chance at random schematics. The tool workstation allows you to craft different tools, weapons, mods, parts, and advanced tools which go into the other workstations. The Ammo Forge is where you craft ammo-based items such as bullet tips and casings. The Stone Forge is where you craft your stone-based items like cement. You also have the regular forge for crafting all the standard metal items. You will eventually replace your regular forge with the Tungsten Forge in order to start crafting forged tungsten. The cement mixer now uses three types of engines to run. Another interesting craftable item you can play with is the slot machine. It requires game tokens, which you can craft using 500 dukes. You have to have the token selected on your toolbar and drop it into the slot machine. It will then kick out a casino game bundle, which you can open to receive random amount of dukes. Just like in real life, you can either make money or lose money. Either way, it's an interesting little side item to have in your base. Now, if making money is your game, then you can craft the investment bank. You'll need to put in a minimum of 2,000 dukes, and in a short amount of time, the machine will return your investment with interest on top. The amount you get varies. Now, I haven't played with it enough to see if you can actually lose money, but my guess is probably yes, unless this is an indexed investment machine. One of my other favorite things about this mod are the class vending machines. You get to craft these for free after completing each class quest and collecting five specific class fragments. Each one has items that you can purchase that correspond to the class. Now, be warned, do not craft these until you are in your final base or if your final base is close by to your initial starter base because they cannot be picked up and moved and they cost a lot to remake. With this mod, you get multiple storage containers you can craft. The first one you get right out of the gate is the small storage, which has 40 slots. The second is the medium storage, which has 54 slots. The large chest has 72 slots. You also have the writable version of the large chest, which also has 72 slots. Then you have the extra large chest that has 88 slots and you have the writable version of the extra large chest, which also has 88 slots. There's also a fantasy storage you can craft, which has 88 slots. There are also unique supply and medical storage units that you can craft, which also have 72 slots. The gun safe has 100 slots for storage and the gas pump has 32 slots. War of the Walkers has cool loot crates that spawn in random locations all around the map, most of which you will find in either the desert or the tempered biomes. They are marked on the map by these black squares. Now, now I read that they are supposed to be random in other biomes as well, but I only came across them in the desert and in the tempered biomes. As far as mining ore and stone, you will come across new and different colored ones in each biome. This one, for instance, gave us coal, oil shale, stone, copper, and zinc. The copper and zinc you can turn into brass using the recycler. This greenish one gave us nitrate and lead along with all the other ores and stone. The brown one gave us more copper, zinc, and stone. The ones in the harder biomes give you scrap tungsten. There are also these big mounds that you can find in different biomes, which have various resources you can get. You get the chance to collect rare stones and metals, which you can sell for dukes, along with raw iron, which can be placed in the recycler to be converted to iron. There are a lot of these mixed ore nodes all over the map, but you still have your classic nodes as well.
There are a bunch of cool legendaries in this mod, like the chainsaw, the impact driver, the auger, the nail gun, the fire axe, the pickaxe, the baseball bat, the sledgehammer, the spear, the hunting knife, the shovel, the club, the sword, and the machete. There are several new ranged weapons as well as new ammo types. There is the SVD Dragonoff Sniper which uses 762. The MK23 which uses 45 ACP. The RPG-7 which uses, yes, you guessed it, rockets. Then you have the UMP-45 which also uses 45 ACP. We have the Remington 870 pump action shotgun which uses 20 gauge ammo. There's also the USAS 12 shotgun which uses 12 gauge. Next is the P90 which uses 5.7 ammo. Followed by the M1911 which also uses 45 ACP. Last but not least we have the FN SCAR which uses 556 ammo. War of the Walkers also has several helpful items that can be found such as the skill point cards which can give you up to 5 skill points on use. There are XP cards that can give you up to 250,000 experience per use and you have the increased XP percentage cards which can last 30 minutes and can give you up to 30% extra XP. Finally we come to the vehicles. Specifically the watercrafts. First one up is the flatboat. Next, we have the raft. This one is the dinghy. Followed by everyone's favorite, the jet ski. Lastly, we have the windsurfer, which I opted not to use. Since the last time I tried using it, my game bugged out causing me to get stuck on it and not even suicide would fix it. Lastly, we have the Hind helicopter, which you will need to either buy or find the parts for in order to craft. This is a beauty and the controls are a little different than the gyro. I hope you guys enjoyed this overview of the War of the Walkers mod. If you want to see War of the Walkers gameplay, please check my channel for my playthrough series of the mod. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more 7 Days to Die content, please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, ignore the dislike button, and feel free to leave me a comment. Also look for my new gameplay series coming October 18th, 2022 called Forsaken. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.